While minding myself out on the front porch, reading a paper that's not quite right, I start to feel a breeze. Although I think nothing of it at first, I have to tend to it because it rustles the papers I'm reading. So I turn myself slightly and hold my papers differently so as to compensate for the wind. And look! My light is starting to go away, the clouds are coming in and the sun is setting. I stand up, looking up as if I was cursing the sky, but then I look at my paper. How am I ever going to get all this work done? There's too much to do and not enough time to do it. I sigh as I turn to go inside, but as I do I feel something cool hit my face. I know that feeling it's familiar to me, but I can't quite remember what is happening. My heart starts to race with a still confused anticipation. But nevertheless, I put my papers down and place a rock on top of them so they don't fly away. Then I step down the stairs and walk to the middle of my courtyard. I feel another drop of familiarity, followed by one of remembrance. Suddenly I am approached by many splashes of comfort. A small rumble in the sky sends shivers of life through my body. The flash in the sky seems almost as to transform me. Still a bit unsure of why I have not yet run for cover, I stand in the damp dirt, searching for something. It is not lost, just misplaced, nor is it forgotten, it's just not remembered. But I know it will lose the confusion and help me to forget my troubles once I find it. I turn and start walking that short distance to the nearby field. Its vast green spread and edges that connect with the sky make a wonderful scene, and it sends more life through me when I arrive. Almost subconsciously, I take off my shoes and socks and roll my pants up to my knees. The now mud dirt surfaces its way through my toes. I look down and smile at my mud-covered feet. Then I remember. I look up at the sky and let the rain hit my face. It splashes off me, cleansing my soul and replenishing my spirit. The field calls my name while the skies echo it. I know what they are telling me now, so I answer their calls. Running, arms open, head held high, feet becoming the earth, I can feel my soul expanding inside me, my spirit close to breaking free. I stop and hold my arms to the skies as though to give myself to them. I let the storm take me in and reunite with it. I quickly am reintroduced to clarification, paired up again with power. The rulers of my deadlined world don't seem too upsetting anymore. The earth and her spirit have accepted me back, forgiving me for my everyman behavior. I lie down in the circle of flowers, my arms and legs stretched to the stems. The flash of life I know so well is showing those not yet aware of the spiritual society that controls things around here. I have been set free. But oh! How time goes by so quickly. If life was always as simple as how you once knew it to be difficult. And looking at my child as she lives a life I once did, I am thankful for learning, that twenty-some years ago, how to free myself. And as I continue to watch her play, a breeze begins to blow. Immediately I react to it, I must show her what I know. August rushes to my side, ready to shelter herself. Instead, I tell her to take off her shoes and take my hand. I walk her to the field nearby, just a slightly further distance than what it was for me so long ago. As remembrance and comfort begins to fall, I notice my child to be untouched. But I know that just because I cannot see her reaction does not mean she hasn't responded. Nor do I know if she is learning to free herself or if her annoyance of it all will lead to her everyman fate. As I let the rain hit my face, I feel her hand fall out of mine. She takes one step, then another, and again. She stops to notice her mud-covered feet, then looks back at me and smiles. She turns, and with open arms, attempts to embrace the edge of the earth and sky. If everyone were to be so lucky as to know that life cannot be lived without rainy days.